Hey, a uh, quad connects, and yeah, there's something there's some four cents discussion going on. Yeah, let's uh, let's uh, let, let, let's let, let's share my screen. It's screen one for some and crazy reason. Of truth. Is he going Zoom, to share this the correct screen? screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Zoom I decided have... that my primary screen is screen two, while this is screen one, which is really fascinating to me. Anyway, um. I cannot zoom this in further, further. Um, Quant Connect. Quant Connect used to be the developer portal. Yeah, back in the day, we went to developer.quant.network and um, you could there um, get into your personal environment and, um, and set up whatever you needed to set up. So right now, um, they, they have migrated. And, and Boss and I alluded to this in the previous uh, English episode, that this would happen. Um, Boss got an email and everybody else received the email as well. Conveniently, six hours after we posted our episode. Is it a coincidence? I think not. Uh, but maybe there was. Um, but we, we have, a, a, and we spoke about this person in, uh, with Boss as well. We have a new uh, programming god. Uh, Juanjo of Juanjo of Juanjo. I don't know. And I apologize. Um, we, we just call him Juanjo <laughs> because that's, Juan that's Juan so amazing. Juanjo. And um, in the developer quant network developer community, the link is in the description. Um, he typed this. Hello, guys. I've been making some tests to see how much credits are consumed when you do a transaction or monitor an address. In my case, I purchased the older 100 pound developer one year pack. Now I have the legacy version plan that allows me to use 10 main nets and their respective test nets. So this is really nice, right? Because he provides a lot of information already about what he's using um, and, and tells you what this applies to. And uh, Mr. Zwanjwo, um figured out that um, the credits you buy, and we spoke about this last episode, right? So uh, you pay one point one dollar, not a pound, dollar per credit. So if you spend like uh, what's that, thirty k, you get forty k credits, something like that. And those credits get consumed um, while you perform actions on the net. So it's kind of like a prepaid system. Um, or where you just buy a bunch, you can pay by by Q and T. You can see that on the on the website. I'll show you some screenshots right here. So here it says, "Hi, Juan Zhuo. My credits zero. Trial. It reads in the bottom at the right of of that box. My plan legacy. These remaining three hundred fifty eight. He used five point four credits currently here. We go to the next thing." You can see here, 30K credits cost you $33,000. So this is not a, a gateway license. This is not what a gateway operator pays. This is definitely um, bottom tier. And this is not a negative thing, but a bottom tier uh, enterprise license, right? Um, so if you start your crypto company, you want to create your token um, and let's call it entry tier. This is just, that's, that's a little bit nicer. It means the same fucking thing, but <laughs> don't, don't want to be insulting people. Um, so you get a bunch of credits, right? 5k, 30k or 15, uh, 15,000 and, and, and you pay uh, accordingly. So these credits then get used on the network. And Tim asked actually in the preparation for this, is this actually quant being consumed? And um, my thesis is that, that it's not, that this is a very clever way for them to save costs. Because if you use your own little credit system, um, no pun intended, or aluminium hat insinuations, mind you, then, then, then you can do on your own network whatever you want. And as soon as this runs out or prior, you do one single transaction to the Ethereum blockchain. 
rather than do all the microtransactions, which cost a lot of money. And quant is all about efficiency and the cost saving. So I think that is what is going on. So um, if we click a little bit further, you can see here the discrepancies in what he has used. I'll go around that pretty quickly. Um, he said, this is a balance I had before making a native transaction using OVR on the Avalanche Fuji testnet. This means I only sent AVAX, no smart contract interaction. After the transaction, it was up 0 0.04 credits, right? That was the screen that I shared earlier. So here it's 5.44. Here it reached 5.4, i.e. he consumed, used 0 0.04 credits which kind of boils down to one over the interaction in this case, uh, equates to a four cent fee. And this is what he says as well. They give us a price of uh, 0 0.044 per transaction through OVL. Of course, these are prices that may or may not be final. The price of quant, has varied these days, and I don't think the amount needed in QNTs have varied. We are still in the process of migration until the end of April, which is really important. Um, so for a smart contract invoke, we have the same credit consumption, 0 0.04 credits per transaction. This is before the transaction, this is after the transaction that invoked, the screenshot reads how much of credits are consumed. And he did the same with ERC20, et cetera, et cetera. So it takes some time, he says, for the credit count to refresh. It does not go instantly. It takes about 40 minutes to an hour to reflect how many have been consumed. Um, and he, he, he kind of folds it all up, saying in resume, taking into account the current quant prices being $127, native transaction slash smart contract transaction, 0 0.04 credits or 0.044 dollars equates to 0.000346 QNT. Um, and he states, I think this info is quite important. And I agree, it is. Um, before we get there, before we could start discussing what, what this would potentially mean, he also adds gateway fee amount is still zero unit QNT. Um, and that's also important for, for the discussion Tim and I will have in a bit. Um, read this April 2nd. Um, from the beginning of the day, this discussion took place in the Quant Network Developer Community. Link is in the description. Maybe I can copy the message link. I'll, I'll throw that in the description as well. And um, so you guys can just hop there and see for yourself if you want more clarity. So so what is going on here, right? And, and, and this is all just speculation and a little bit of logical thinking um, to the extent that we have the capacity to do so. Um, four cents for a transaction. My first response was, holy shit, that is expensive. And, and, and Tim shared that opinion, right? Mm. Yeah. So four cents for a transaction seems hefty. Because as Tim put it, okay, so if I sent 20 million transactions, I pay $800,000 in fees. And I was like, uh, yes. But in our entire lifetime, we have not used the word the 20 million times. So 20 million transactions is a lot. And if a company is so big that it says that it needs to send 20 million transactions, that means they make a lot of money. Yeah. And then the question arises, right? For what do you use overledger? Do you use it for everything? Do you use it only for the for the for the national critical infrastructure things? Is it worth four cents? Um, and, and for some perspective, I'll throw this up on the screen. Um, an email, if you go with an email marketing list thing, an email marketing list could cost between uh, 100 to 600 cost per mil. 
Um, and we yep. found an other thing. If you want an email server, you, you pay an average of about, oh, misclick, oh well. You, you pay like between two cents per email up to like 10K emails. And then it goes as low as 0. 0.008, so a little less than a cent per email. If you send a quarter million, yeah, above a quarter, quarter million emails, you, you get discounts more, obviously. So, yeah. so for a regular email, you pay about one cent. An overledger transaction, bare bones, costs you about four cents. An email is technically useless. It has practically zero value. So if you send a message, like I said to Tim earlier, from China through Russia to the United States, I'd say you want to use maybe Overledger. Is that worth four cents? I think so. Yeah, it's... Thanks, first of all, for your introduction into what was going on yeah. in the quant. Yeah, I, I haven't been talking for like nine minutes, ten minutes. Sorry, man. No, it's okay. It's uh, I wouldn't be able to uh, explain it any better. Um, yeah, that that just was the point that I brought up. Uh, besides the is Q and T being used for this? Yeah. Um, yeah, four cents sounds like a lot, and my question is. Will you get? I mean, I can imagine that if you don't necessarily do a lot of transactions, you do like 40,000 or something, and I can imagine that four cents, cents that's okay. If we start entering the millions and the hundreds of millions or even the billions, then my question is, will we see discounts occurring? No, we don't definitely really know, and I think that there will. So, yeah. At least it's really interesting that for the first time, as I can remember it, that we kind of have a price linked to Q and T because I, I remember that this is one of the things that people are really interested in, like the yeah. usage of the network and, yeah. and what it will cost. Because what this all will boil down to is is if what we as gateway operators will start earning and and, and to put it no. we've had this. This is not what a game will operate we earn. Enter, before we go into that discussion, and we, I wouldn't call it staking, even though we know it's... Yeah, yeah, what, yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's not enter that discussion again, but what it boils down to is what you will see at the end going through the setting up a gateway process, for, uh, putting your q and in there, doing yeah. all the magical stuff that, that is required. What will eventually boil down to your bank account. That, that is the question yeah. we all want to know. And this no, is one the, of the questions you, want, you want to get answered. That's the question you want to get answered. Right? Uh, yeah, we, we want to know the answer too. Yeah, yeah. yeah because so, that, that is ultimately interesting for us as yeah. regular people so what, Q and T. What, what, we now, what we now know is to use Overledger itself, right? The compute or the infrastructure and the security that comes with it. You pay four cents if you buy 40,000 credits, 30,000, something like that. So, so that's that's an estimate for their service and, 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 and a little bit of profit. Yeah, let's 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 say they make uh, they make thirty percent of it. Which I don't know. So 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 that's that's a cost they need to cover, and of course, companies can buy most likely plants that are either unlimited or whatnot. But those costs are there; those costs need to be covered, right? Same as we're sitting here. I have three LED bars on my face, and I got my microphone on, and I got my 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 my, my power pack and my computer and all that stuff. And um, everything costs money, and costs need to be covered. Um, that that does not go away. So so we know that part, right? So they say four cents. Um, for us is 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 what we need want to keep to keep the light on for these things. Let's assume that that's correct. That does not include the use of the network. 
This is just their gateways, right? That's why the gateways are still zero. The quant gateways are still there. Yeah, they, they use these for the test net or for their clients. I don't know what is going on behind the scenes, obviously. But this will apparently cover their cost because the gateway fees are set to zero still, um, which is fine. But as soon as we enter the equation, then things get different. And, and, and arguably more expensive because the, the 2020 information, eh? Right, the information from back in year 2020 was that every gateway operator can can set their own fee. Right, you can you can determine yourself how much you want to charge for a transaction. And yes, we can say I want 10 euros for a transaction, which is fine. You can ask, <laughs> just like in the real world, you can always ask. But the question is, will people pay? And the answer is most likely no because there will be other people and 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 unless there's a lot of colluding going on i don't see a transaction costing 20 euros anytime soon um regardless those fees need to be paid and there will be a, a routing algorithm or a routing algorithm for that in the future no doubt because there will be game theory and there will be a way to to get the cost as low as possible and there will be a yield that, that people will get, and it will not be fixed. And it will be dependent on the quality of your gateway. It will be dependent maybe on your uptime, but definitely on your reliability, on the tier of your gateway, which nodes do you run, how many do you run, um, et cetera. So that will be added costs. And this is all speculation, obviously, and guessing because the information is three years old. There is a very good chance that um, within the overledger environment, let's say the United States can say, okay, we want to use the decentralization of the network because it adds resiliency, right? It adds consensus, um, adds all these wonderful things that DOT can provide. Um, and we need to get this message to China. So we want to use like 100 gateways for this type of transaction. And that means that this single message will cost them four cents. And this message could be, okay, let's send, let, let's send 10, 10 billion to China. I don't know. And uh, we want to do that message through 100 gateways. Then they will have to pay a lot more than the four cents. Mm -hmm. If you're just sending $100, you just use whatever it's called, Venmo or PayPal, whatever. Nobody gives a crap. But if it's really really important information or a really high number of value you want to go with the resilient decentralized network and then paying four cents to quant plus one cent to yarno one cent to tim mm. um, etc and then maybe you pay 10 euros for a transaction i just looked on uniswap if I swap ETH to QNT, I pay thirteen dollars euros, thirteen <laughs> for yep. a transaction. They'll, they'll, they'll get me two and a half QNT. So, 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 what is expensive, right? It depends on what information is being sent. Are we talking medical information? Are we talking um, securities? Maybe right on an on an exchange. Are we talking about God knows what? Um, the the necessity of the message getting across untampered will determine what people are willing to pay. And yes, there will be large differences, even right now. Um, why do people pay a lot of money to send things over Ethereum um, if they can just do it for what God knows how much cheaper on, on other chains? Um, so there will always be optionality there. And um, the gateway fees, nobody knows. We're, we're not there yet, um, but but that will be an, a, an extra cost on top. There's no doubt. Definitely. They, ha they have to. And there's no overledger network without gateways, right? That is established. 
that has been confirmed by Gilbert over and over. Um, so, so, so we'll get there. And we have another piece of the puzzle right now saying we need four cents if you want to use our, our stuff, which is, uh, I think, uh, pretty amazing uh, to have that breadcrumb. Yeah, it's, it, it definitely is a breadcrumb. Um, and we'll see how this develops. Plus yeah. my uh, um, enthusiasm regarding trying to understand how, um, how I say in English, um, if, how special this is, if that makes any sense. Like, mm -hmm. sure, it's really nice to hear this. Um, but we did, did get tokenized last year, and then it took like eight months before we heard the second step. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> Uh, is is this it, yeah. or how long is the wait going to be? It definitely is interesting, nonetheless. Oh, so you know the trial. To, we, you know the yeah? tr the trial ends in 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 thirty days or sixty days, something like that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because we, we already knew that by the end of April, um, one of those things ended, and I believe there is a sixty day trial just in general. So it could right. very well be um, that 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 we know this H1, um, where, where we are at. In the light of this, right, um, Galileo, you spoke about this earlier. Um, they are set to deploy their token when? Uh, on the sixth Thursday, 6th of April at 2 p.m. Yeah, so that's prior to Central releasing European this episode. Point. Let yeah. us know how it went in the comments because they would have launched their token last Monday, um, but, but that failed. Uh, for some reason, they postponed for reasons unknown to us. Um, and then Tim asked a question, right? He's like, yeah, but they are dependent on quant. And that sent me on a, another tangent. Um, <laughs> because yes, Galileo is dependent on quant, but that is also the reason how they could have gone how they could go to market so quick. And, and if we look around, right, everybody is doing this. Yeah. Even this Confi show is being recorded, not on my hard disk. I do have the capacity, I have the bandwidth, but I am also reliant on my internet provider. And if my internet provider fails, then this episode is kaput. If I upload it to the cloud, then Tim can keep the episode up the recording doesn't stop. He just pauses it and we can continue where we left off after my internet. Um, has, has, has come back. Has it happened the in hard months, way but, last year. Yeah, but it could, right? So there's a lot of benefits to using cloud in this case. Another example is for cloud gaming. If you're on Xbox Ultimate, you notice you do not need to, look, to download every single game if you want to try it. You can merely go onto their platform, choose for the cloud gaming solution. You can try the game out. And if you want it, you can still download it, no problem. But if you only have one terabytes of, of, of hard drive, that will fill up pretty quickly. Like one Horizon 5 core game is already 120 gigs, which is crazy. I can remember that a, a, a floppy disk could contain a, a game. Anyway. Game like Red Dead Redemption is already like 200 gigs. It's insane. My play, I'm yeah. on PlayStation, but yeah, it, it fills up so quickly. Yeah. And there's tons of people that don't even buy a gaming PC anymore. You can just rent compute as long as you have a decent internet connection yeah and then, all, I mean, then then they will just render the game on the highest tier soft uh, hardware they can get and they just send you the feed you have a little bit of latency right that's the drawback but yeah you will not have to pay fucking three and a half thousand euros for a new computer yeah and you can still game at the highest settings by just I'm having really a monitor and a crappy laptop or yeah. even on, on an Android phone, if you if you desire to do so. I'm so, very curious how these cloud gaming solutions will develop. Um, Google Stadia is also one of the uh, yeah yeah one of the players yeah. in that field. In the future, you will own nothing and you will be happy. That's where we're that's where we're heading, right? The service economy. Look outside my window here. There are three different brands of scooters. Electrical bicycles, sorry, electric bicycles, electric cars. You can just rent everything. You just walk up, 
you tap your phone, you're logged in, and you're good to go. That's it. No need to own a car. No need to own a scooter. And, 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 and that's where we're heading. So if we're looking at projects like these, what Quant is now providing, that is the future. Nobody ever in the future wants to own, well, not nobody, but practically nobody wants to own a fucking data center. Because all of this infrastructure, I bought a new PC, spent a good amount of money. This thing will be more or less obsolete in six to 10 years, probably quicker, looking at the rate of development right now. So that's a yeah. pretty, pretty serious write-off, right? Because I, all the upgrades, almost spent 3K for the lot. That, that, that's, that, that's a pretty big write-off. <laughs> that's a lot of money. That's like... Uh, I'm not gonna. But it, I'm gonna that, go that's there. definitely start... an interesting point. I mean, if, if you look definitely at the development of technology, for for instance, and you, you go to you look at you would look at like the 1990s and the the, the, the zeros, um, because you brought up the point of computer uh, computers and computing. That was the moment that like. The computing power like took hyper leaps every every two or every two yeah. years, yeah. and you would almost have to buy had to buy like a new computer every couple of years. Nowadays, yeah. like a six or seven year old computer can still can still do, can still work. But you, we weren't necessarily happier back in the day. We just had to buy new stuff every every now and then because it would yeah. be obsolete. But yeah. what we are now switching into is like this, this um, um, subscription economy where we don't, well, we do not necessarily own it anymore, but you just pay an annual fee and it will get you the newest stuff. I think the, the economy hasn't changed necessarily. No. Okay, it's a much more no, that's... deeper fundamental discussion behind this. I don't want to go. No, that it's point, an interesting but... discussion. I, I think it's. <laughs> Things haven't really changed that much if you think about it deeply. No. No, no, how no, the uh, economy works, and it needs to because well, we need yeah. to keep, yeah, yeah, making yeah. stuff, yeah. Otherwise, the well, economy will, will will grind to a halt, and then we're in a recession, and everything is going down. So, yeah, sorry. No, no, no. It was a very, very good contribution. I think you're absolutely right. Um, but in the light of the point that we were making. So Galileo doesn't own all their shit. They are dependent on quant. Yes. Um, and but th that's the standard right now. N nobody wants to own a data center anymore. Nobody wants to rent server space if you don't have to. Um, same for your VPS. In the future, if you're going to run an over ledger gateway, my God, guy, people, ladies, gentlemen, comrades, get a VPS virtual private server, it'll set you back like a five or a ten or a month for like a pretty decent one, right? We run the quantfishow.com, our website, um, on a VPS, which is a quad core, which has like 400 gigs of memory and I believe 16 gigs of RAM or eight gigs, I can remember. And it costs me 15 euros a month. But I have no um, coding or different shit to do it updates like every day i get an email your website just updated which is wonderful and they just take care of everything if it's to be migrated they take care of it everything just works my ip is not visible you can choose if you want your own ip uh, because you share bandwidth now for most applications not relevant it's not interesting um it's not a problem so ju just go with that don't do stuff like this from your home it, it will not save you money. It will not give you more control. Um, so, so we use the services. Quant provides these services. And um, I think it's a wonderful model. I think there's a lot of companies going to Galileo way in the future. And they, and they will just sign up to Quant and get what they need. If Quant doesn't have it, they go to Oracle. And they, they go to, through Quant by proxy which is also fine by us. And eventually yeah. num number will go up. When? Yes. 
Ja. Yeah. It's to circle back to Galileo. I think that is also a good example of the, that subscription economy that we were pointing at. Because, well, you don't necessarily want to own that bottle of whiskey yourself. Why would you? Right? So you need to store it somewhere. And if someone breaks into your house or uh, your kid, hey, what's that? Yeah. And but don't get me started. The floor, yeah, yeah. Then, then your 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 whiskey is on the ground. You don't need necessarily want to own stuff. That, well, you want to own it. It seems yeah, you can own it, but you don't. Huh? And that's and that's interesting, right? Because people, do you want to own it or do you want to hold it? And that's where we get into the into the weeds. Because that's why people are so cringely crying about the World Economic Forum remark, right? And without going full tinfoil here, who gives a shit if you don't own anything in the future? Yeah, I want to I wanna own my house. I want to own my car. I want to own my guns. I want to own everything. Okay. Okay. Um, but why? And that's just human psychology. It gives you a sense of control. Controlling your environment, controlling your, your everything. And it's, it's hilarious because there hasn't been any control for years if you live online. Not yet. It's getting better. It's truly getting better. Within five or 10 years, you don't need 10,000 passwords anymore. You don't need paper wallets anymore. It will all be zero knowledge proofs and it will all be digital identity, etc. Um, and yes, there is a trade-off. You then no longer own a car that you need to service yourself. And you do not own a house, maybe, that you need to service yourself. And, and there's a ton of other things that will get easier. And you will say yes, and everybody will say yes, because that's what human beings do. We want efficiency. And we are, in essence, lazy in a good way. That's why we have all this technology right now. Or are you still handwriting letters, licking postage stamps, walking to the mailbox, throwing it in, and waiting for three days to then call uh, somebody, did you receive my letter? <laughs> or something yeah. like that. No, you just send an email. And as a result, you have a Google account that you shared your information left and right, that you accepted cookies. Because you are lazy, you just click yes, mm. and that's fine, and that's fine, and and it's the same with with all the other things. 